Learn yourself, Jody. <laughs> lessons have been planned with the intention of making you, the viewer, a fluent speaker of Geordie. It's many years since I first perceived the need for such a course. In fact, I was a schoolboy at the time. The rain in Passe Maine falls mainly down the drain. I became greatly upset when a master was appointed to give lessons in speech training. He insisted that the beautifully mellifluous class should no longer be used. Instead, we should say mud, or rather, mad. But we all liked speaking, Geordie, and did not agree with him. Mad. Mud! Mad. Mud! After six months of such lessons, he broke. <laughs> Crisis point came at religious assembly when he prefaced the introductory prayer with, What fat the day, lads? Eyes doing? Look in! These words were his downfall. He was drummed out of the NUT and blackballed from the lit and fell. And now, as I recall those memorable words spoken so long ago, I am reminded of the power and sheer poetry of Geordie spoken at its best. After the Geordie benediction, Get on, kidder! Get stuck in! We begin the first lesson by learning some typical Geordie sounds. <laughs> Lads. I'll shoot that soon, recordist. As I was saying, the first sound to learn is how is the Geordie R. Or to be technical, the uvula R. This is both rolling and buttonhole, combining the best effects of Billy Connolly at his most raw with the sound of an old nanny goat being sick. An interesting historical fact about the Geordie R is its marked improvement during the Industrial Revolution, when hours were long and lunch breaks were short. It became the habit for working Geordies to hastily request a pint of the local brew. Here's a boon, Jack. And whilst in the act of consuming same, would order a second. Kills a yuck. This improved gargling note resulted in northern barmen of that era dressing in sou'wester and oilskins. Kills a yuck. Now, students, you are ready to try reproducing the Jordy R for yourselves. One. Open the gob to its full extent. Two, vibrate the tonsils in an anti-clockwise action. Anti-clockwise, you fool. Three, summon up a hacking cough. <laughs> Just as it emerges, change it into an R sound. Thus producing the full jolly R in all its pure beauty. If you should live south of the Weir, have been to Sandhurst, public school, or lived in Darris Hall or Cleden Village, then you'll really find wrapping your tonsils round the war sound very, very tricky. So, try mixing a compound of surgical spirit and madras curry powder, and anointing the tonsils with it. <laughs> It has never been known to fail. <coughs> Having mastered the first and most typical of all Geordie sounds, we are now ready for lesson two. 
featuring the Geordie dip. Uh, this is defined as the combination of two adjacent vowels or vowel-like sounds into one sonorous syllable and has been further described by Professor Jollop of Newcastle University as a great load of Let us give an example. In English, certain key letters of the alphabet are pronounced thus. A, E, Y, I. A, E, Y, I. However, in Geordie, these letters are pronounced thus. E, E, Y, I. E, E, Y, I. Practice these sounds with me. Have you got it? Why, I, man. A fine example of a complete word incorporating the Geordie diphthong is bear. Bear. It's used when commenting upon the merits of a cigar or cigarette. They're not a bear tab. They're not a bear tab. Or if your pater should be indisposed, me dares bad with a beer. Me dares bad with a beer. A further useful Geordie diphthong is found in the noun yem. Yem. As used when returning home to the little woman. I'm gunning yem to war lass. I'm gunning yem to war lass. All phrases may be given particular intimate or authentic colloquial meaning by the addition of the expression Yeah, bugama! Remember to roll that Yeah, Yeah, bugama! Now, with dentures well stuck in place, you are at last ready for lesson three. A practical oral test in which you, the viewer, will venture into Geordie land itself and test your newly acquired knowledge on the resident. A highly trained native guide will lead you to the territory of the former headhunters of Bladen. Proceed with extreme caution. Don't wear a boner. Or a deer stalker. The natives may mistake you for an income tax collector, or one of the landed gentry, or a member of parliament. <laughs> Safely wearing a flat tweed cap, enter the local hostelry and commence using all your Geordie phrases learned to date in correct chronological order. One. There's a boom yuck. <laughs> Two. They're not a bear tab. And again, they're not a bear tab. Three. I feel bad with a beer. Ah. I omitted to inform you of another vital phrase to be used by students downing their first brown ale in one gulp. It incorporates a powerful Geordie diphthong and reads, Where's the nutty? Where do you 
can't give it down where I'd let myself in for. I could have had any man. Me mother was right. He'll always be a waste. Five. Yeah, fuck him. Although difficulties will be encountered at first, keep on practicing until yeah, words are perfect. <laughs> and keep your eyes chalked for further lessons. Count as a piece.